I started to get the feeling that with this except all anywhere anywhere statement in our chain input policy except right that the fact that I had added this except anywhere anywhere squid and then reject from anywhere anywhere was not going to really take effect since there is this except all here at the top so to test my theory on that what I did was is I removed the this line right here right and I removed the squid line right here okay and you can see here these are the commands I put in to delete those two lines right and then I um, output or listed the chain input IP tables policy and you can see here that under policy except that we've got that all anywhere anywhere and then when I tried it out here on my host I was able to still receive the web pages so um, now not necessarily um, so nothing is being blocked at all whatsoever right so what I want to do now is is I want to delete this accept all anywhere anywhere command and only accept it for port 3128 and SSH and any ports that I establish so what we need to do is we need to delete this line right here so I think this command right here might do it IP tables uh, dash T tables filter capital D delete an input from the input table um, port all right because we had all here and then J the decision was to accept and the decision was to accept so we'll, let's try that out so we'll put that in there right here bad rule does a matching rule exist in chain so it's not liking that so let's try to see if we can fix that. Okay, let's try this one. This command, IP tables. I did a man of the IP tables, paused the recording, and checked out some of the rules. So let's see if we can do this. IP tables, tables, um, the default table, the filter command, we'll put in the default table. We're going to uh, delete from the input chain, which is the chain that we're, we've been trying to remove this from. Uh, and then it's the third rule so one two three so we'll just say enter and we didn't get a rejection on that so it looks like it worked and then we'll do a list and you can see that we no longer have that accept all anywhere anywhere statement so now what we can do is we can add well let's just test this out so now if we hit refresh on Dan's courses we should get a rejection, but we're not. Well, because we're accepting all from anywhere, anywhere state, it's an established relationship. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm unable to re um, reestablish a relationship with my website from the client. And what I did was, is I had removed on the chain input policy the accept anywhere from anywhere command the reason it was still working for a moment there was because I believe we had an accept all for a related or established session and since this web page was part of a the previous accepted web pages were part of an established session it was allowing it through but now as you can see this reject all anywhere anywhere is actually denying traffic so you can see here that we are unable to um, pick up the web page and what I did was is I quit the web browser and I opened up a fresh one to test it and sure enough we we're unable to get the site right so try to go to Google for instance and and as you can see can't pick up the page so now we'll put in our commands here that will help us get this going again so what we'll do is down here at the bottom we'll put in a capital D and we'll delete the reject line right and then we will add let's see here we will add the input line for port uh, protocol TCP destination port 3128 
accept. So we'll add that line or append it, really. The capital A is for append. And then we will add the reject line or append it to the end. So now if we look at our list, you can see here that before we reject all traffic, reject all protocols anywhere, anywhere, we accept traffic to squid on port 3128 right destination port squid which is 3128 and from any source to any destination so now if we test our client and we let's close the browser even to get a fresh browser and we open it up and we try to let's say go to google.com we'll pause it and as you can see it worked this time so now we're able to receive communications again and I wanted to point out that having a rule above the reject all that accepts all protocols from any source to any destination is going to trump anything that happens after it so all of the commands that came after it were basically not going to really affect because you're accepting everything and then rejecting everything afterwards is pointless so these these access list statements essentially these IP table statements um, happen in order so there is a pecking order for what happens so you want to accept before you reject and so I needed to tweak that a little bit to really get it to prove that it's working so now that we know that um, we are correctly forwarding routing natting and that we're actually correctly sending traffic on port 80 to the squid proxy it's time to add a few more things we're going to set up a DHCP server on our CentOS machine and then eventually what you want to do is configure squid and I already have video tutorials on how to configure squid add squid guard and do other things like that but to get the DHCP server running let's do that first so what we'll do is we'll do a yum install DHCP okay and what we'll do is we'll hit enter and that'll install the DHCP server we'll hit a Y for yes and download the packages you can see that it's installing the DH client which is already probably installed and then the DHCP server and DHCP common dash common alright okay it looks like it's complete and so now all we need to do is to um, configure uh, DHCP and to do that what we need to do is um, just add some lines to the DHCP configuration file I've already copied and pasted some DHCP commands from my website under installing DHCP server so all we need to do is open the comp file so to do that what we'll do is we'll say change directory and we'll look in our ETC directory again and we'll look in the DHCP D directory and there's no such directory let's how about DHCP we'll hit enter yes ls and there is our dhcpd.conf file so what we'll do is we'll type vim dhcpd.conf and there is the file and all we need to do is go into insert mode so we'll type i to get into insert mode and we'll go to this next line backspace and I want to paste so let's see if I can paste here nope I'm not able to paste okay I've opened up a browser and I've gone to my website here where I have some text copy that has DHCP server commands alright and now I can minimize that and let's see if we can now paste it into our paste alright there we go and now all I have to do is edit this to get it working correctly so Right, that looks good and I'll uncomment this 
and line it up. And you can see here that just some basics. Now, on the private network, it's a 111 network that we're going to be handing out. And we're going to need to hand out some a router, 11.1, .1 for all our, and that'll be a 111.1, excuse me. And I don't have a domain name for the domain, so I'll leave that out. And domain name servers. And I could just put in that for the domain name server, that's fine. And then the range that I'm going to hand out, let's hand out 111 dot 150 to 192.168.111.170. All right. And then the network is the 111.0 network with a default subnet mask. And that looks pretty good. And see if I can put a comma in here and put another additional 4.4.2.2 in domain name servers. All right, that looks good. Okay, so we'll just hit escape. And then we'll type in a colon. And then WQ to save. I'm in Vim right now. And that looks like that was done. Let's cat it just to take a look to make sure that it worked out okay. dhcpd.conf. And I can see the file here. And look at the numbers, make sure they make sense. Right? Okay. And then service dhcp restart. DHCP D restart. Okay, so that looks good. All right, so it looks like we started up our DHCP server and let's see if it's working now. So, on our client, what we can do is we can go over here and I will um, close this window and we need to set this up and change our interface, our network interface for this client. So we'll go here and we'll go here, edit connections and wired connection, edit and change it IPv4 to DHCP automatic and hit save and close. And it looks like it's going to work. So now we'll say IP or if config. And you can see it's trying to pick up an IP address up in the corner here now. We lost our IP address, our manually configured IP address. And now we're trying to pick one up. And we're hoping to pick one up from our server. And it looks like we did. We'll hit if config. And sure enough, there it is, 192.168.111.150. And it looks like we have an IP address now, which means we could, let's say, ping yahoo.com. And there it is.